Welcome to Fight News Now Extra. It's John Pollock with you for all the latest news happening in mixed martial arts. Today on the show, we're going to discuss the Reebok deal and the early effect that it's having on some fighters. Chris Cyborg is cleared for Friday's Invicta card, and a former UFC fighter is catching criticism for an incident at his gym. A video has surfaced online of a sparring session involving former UFC fighter Josh Neer and a man named Patrick Martin who came into the gym after a series of back and forth messages online between Neer and Martin. The video shows Neer delivering repeated forearms to a downed Martin and then being pulled away and appears to kick Martin while he's down. This took place at the Round Kick Gym in Iowa, but gym owner Pete Peterson spoke to MMAJunkie.com and maintains it was a controlled environment, that Martin was never unconscious, and when he was kicked, it was actually near tripping when he made contact. Chris Cyborg Justino has been cleared to go ahead and fight this Friday in Los Angeles at the Invicta FC card. Justino was subjected to two out-of-competition drug tests by the California State Athletic Commission, with the commission telling Ariel Helwani that her second test, which was the more thorough of the two, has come back clean. The first test has not yet come back. Justino will headline this Friday's card against Charmaine Tweet. And finally, the trickle-down effect of the Reebok deal to the overall sponsorship game in MMA appears to be taking a hit on some UFC fighters, at least in the case of James Krause. The lightweight spoke to Mark Ramundi of MMAfighting.com, noting that he has lost $20,000 in sponsorship money since the Reebok deal was announced, with sponsors knowing that they will no longer be able to sponsor fighters in the cage or throughout fight week come July. Coming up this Saturday night, before the fights, you want to tune in here for our live preview show at 7 p.m. Eastern. Robin Black, John Ramdean, and I getting you set for UFC 184. Then we'll send you off to TSN 2 at 8 Eastern. Four prelim fights at the Staples Center leading into the pay-per-view card at 10 p.m. Eastern. Five big fights coming your way. Headline by Ronda Rousey defending the Women's Bantamweight Championship against Kat Zingano. And now we welcome in... Robin Black, John Ramdean's not here, and I think this was very convenient because we're talking about sponsorship money, drug testing, <laughs> and a scandalous video from a gym. All of Ramdean, that's his wheelhouse if there ever was <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, this is right into the world of what Ramdean loves chatting about. Let's talk first about uh, the Josh Muir incident, and I'm curious, uh, you are someone that has obviously spent an uh, inordinate amount of hours inside of gyms with high-level fighters. Mm -hmm. um, this stuff is something that, to the out outside world, looks criminal. Yep. The, when a video like this exists, now there's a lot of back and forth here between a, a guy who was apparently online going back and forth with Josh Neer. We don't know what exactly was happening, but we saw the video. And video can be pretty damning and it looked pretty bad. Yeah, I've actually been flip-flopping back on this. And I guess like any good debate topic, there's more than one side. And we don't always have to choose our th hole in the sand and defend it. You know, and I, I've, I have flip-flopped back and forth. Because I watched that video and I'm like, oh, man. And you only see a guy's head on the ground being smashed. I'm like, man, that's a pro fighter. That's a guy who trains all the time to beat people up. He looks really angry angry here. He's smashing this guy in. At one, two, pull him off. I'm like, well, you know, it was an MMA sparring match that got out of control. That happens. I've seen that. I've been involved on the wrong end or on, in, in something like that. Most people who've been fighting in a gym have. You're training with guys that you respect. It goes too far. Little things like that. Um, so if you one, two, and he's off, I'm not as bothered. One, two, eight, twelve, he's off, then kicks him in the head. I'm really bothered. I look at that and I'm disgusted by it. Then you hear more of the story that this guy literally is a 250 pound internet bully. The type of person who talks at people, who beaks off to people, who intimidates them. You live in a small town in your neighborhood of Des Moines, Iowa, and they're saying stuff to your girlfriend and your friend and threatening you and all of this kind of stuff. When I soak that in and think of it as an individual, I'm like, I can't say that I might not be pushed to that limit. I mean, human beings get pushed to that limit. The thing is, if you, I've been bullied in gyms before. You push me to that level, I'm sort of a grown up who is a bit of a thinker, and I'm not a really angry, violent guy. I'm probably going the other way. Josh Neer's a killer. Josh Neer's a killer. Like, you, you may have to be a little bit off to provoke this guy to that point. So you weigh the whole thing out, and what do you end up with? It's kind of gross. I wish I never saw it, and I don't know enough about it. Yeah, I guess it's, you know, you look at the circumstances here. I mean, this is someone that, you know, you respond to a bully on the street, and you're Josh Neer. Yeah. You're going to jail yeah. for that. And just because you have these walls around you inside of a gym, I mean, it, it, may, it brings up an interesting debate, and it's one that has been discussed in the past, the idea that, you know, are we going to ever get to a point where 
if you are a licensed fighter within a state, are we going to be installing cameras in gyms and monitoring yeah. when guys are just disregarding mm. medical suspensions, for instance. They're yeah. always given these medical suspensions. They're right back into the gym. Yep. And commission saying, listen, if you want to be a licensed fighter, we're going to be monitoring stuff like this. I mean, is this an argument towards that? I don't I, know if it'll ever yeah, happen. Yeah, I think those kinds of things are, are kind of impossible. Like, I, I hear that they're re, the, the, the commission is looking at, you know, the contracts that you sign when you get a license to fight and seeing if anything was broken in there. And it doesn't sound like it is. So. In the gym environment, in a professional athletics environment, it's like, well, what does this mean? Well, you push your coach too far, you embarrass somebody, you're, you outweigh them, you know, you're intimidating them, you're saying, we need to fight, I'm gonna beat you up, you can't do anything. You get to that point with a guy who's Josh Neer? Like, why do you wanna do that with Josh Neer? But some people are like that. So people like that, I mean, there's another argument, it's like, if that guy got his ass kicked when he was 15, maybe he'd have shut the up a little bit earlier you know what I mean like so wh what are we as a society do we tolerate that to the point that it's gone so far no one's done anything about it that when they finally do we're horrified or do we look and go if somebody slapped this idiot around when he was younger maybe he wouldn't have such a big mouth weigh all of that it's really tough uh, I also want to touch upon uh, the James Krause story. He was uh, talking to MMAfighting.com, and he was not someone that's coming up uh, upset about the Reebok deal. He's yep. taking that wait-and-see approach that, hey, maybe this money I've lost in the, in the short term, I may gain mm -hmm. long-term from the Reebok deal. But the immediate effect is he's lost $20,000 in sponsorship money, and I'm certain he's not the only one where there's a lot of sponsors who are like, there's no long-term for me after July. I'm done. Yeah, I mean, whenever the game changes like that, the creative people will find another way. They usually do. But in the short term, if it's like, well, I was surviving on an extra $2,500 a month every month, and now that's gone, that is a really harsh effect. And like so many other things in life, the guys at the top sound like they're going to do okay. The guys at the bottom are like, well, we're just getting started. It's new. It's the guys in the middle, that middle class, they're, they're going to get hurt. Yeah, it's an unfortunate timing thing where you're losing the money now, and you're not going to reap any re money until months and months from now. For Robin Black, I'm John Pollock. We have more Fight News Now Extra coming up. Don't go anywhere.